Time now to go inside out with SNY NFL insider Connor Hughes. And Connor, you've been around Robert Sala since he arrived in New York. So how stunning is it that so quickly he's gone from Mike White playing being the furthest thing from his mind to now everything is on the table at quarterback? Yeah, honestly, I, I don't know if if stunning or, or surprising is the right word. I think what we're just experiencing or seeing right now from Robert Sala is the shift of expectations for the Jets, right? I mean, when they when they drafted Zach Wilson, I, I don't know if coddling is the right word or maybe coddling is the right word, but in all honesty, that's what everyone does when they select a quarterback so early as the Jets did with Zach Wilson because you want to do everything that you possibly can to have that quarterback have success because you know that if he does reach his franchise quarterback potential, you are set for the next 15 years. So the Jets have kind of given him all of these opportunities to develop all of these opportunities to reach that potential. But with young quarterbacks, there eventually comes a time where the kid gloves need to come off and you need to see if he's either going to sink or he is going to swim. And with Zach Wilson's rookie year and with Zach Wilson through the first half of this season, the, the, the goals for this year for the jets, I know they talked about winning and wanting to reach the playoffs and all that, but it was really all about Zach Wilson and his development. What Robert Sala basically said on Monday is that that's no longer priority number one, Zach Wilson. He's not priority number one. What the Jets realize is they have a defense that is ready to win right now. They have receivers, a running back, a competent offensive line, a grouping of playmakers and players all around the quarterback who are ready to win now. So the expectations for the Jets, it's no longer about getting Zach Wilson to be a franchise quarterback. It's about winning football games in 2022. And what Robert Sala now has to do between Monday and Wednesday is figure out what quarterback gives the Jets the pet, the best chance to do that. If it's Zach Wilson, they'll stick with Zach Wilson. But if it's Mike White or Joe Flacco, the Jets are going to be making a quarterback change. Now, Connor, we don't need to rehash how bad the performance was on the field, but Wilson, of course, made it worse with his lack of accountability afterwards, and Robert Sala was asked about that as well on Monday. Football is an emotional game, and I, I, I'm not going to shy away from the fact that I do think he is the ultimate competitor. He wants he he, he wants to win just as uh, about as much as anybody. Um, he works as hard as anybody. It, it means so much to him. Um, can he be a little bit better in front of the, in front of you guys? And when he's up here on the podium and in terms of the expectation that when you are standing in front of the podium, it's, it's our job to, to take bullets and, and own it, uh, especially when it's time to own it. Yeah, he, of course he can, but I don't, I don't think it's indicative of uh, how he feels about his team or teammates. And I don't think he is naive to the fact that, you know, offense wasn't, didn't play to the best of their ability while the defense is out there. Paul, and that's, I don't think that's what he was trying to, to convey. I really don't. Connor, winning or losing the press conference is one thing, but how much work now does Zach Wilson have to do to win back his own locker room? A lot. I, I mean, those those words. It, it wasn't even just saying no to to if you know he believes that that the offense you know kind of let the defense down. It was you know saying that there are things that Denzel Mims and Garrett Wilson do that frustrate him. It was blaming the wind when on the exact other sideline, Mac Jones had his way with the wind and had no issue throwing in the exact same elements. I mean, they were excuses upon excuses upon excuses. And when you're in that locker room and and you're the defense that allows just three points, or you're the 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 special teams unit that really stands on their head for nine of 10 punts or however many that the jets kicked off there. I mean, it, it does get frustrating. And that's why, you know, we reported after the game that frustrations were at an all time high within that locker room at Zach Wilson. And, and they were carried over and amplified and even worse on Monday. So there is some cleaning up that Zach Wilson needs to do. He needs to. And, and honestly, I think the easiest thing that Zach Wilson could have done is when the jets had, their afternoon meeting today, he should have stood up in front of his entire team and been like, look, guys, I let my emotions get the best of me. I was upset over the game. I shouldn't have said what I said. That's my bad. You guys know how I feel. But from what we've heard from Quinn and Williams, from Carl Lawson, from doing my own digging, that didn't happen on Monday. Zach Wilson didn't stand up in front of his teammates. He didn't apologize to his teammates. Now, I did hear that in meetings, he received his fair share of criticism from the coaching staff, but still there's a difference between the coaching staff criticizing you and you stepping up when you made a, a you know, a, a mistake and admitting to that mistake. So, you know, there, there's definitely some, some damage control. I think that Zach Wilson has to do. It could have started really early there on Monday and it doesn't look like that happened, but ultimately I, I think what we can see here, man, is that if Zach Wilson gets back on the field and plays really, really well against the Chicago bears, all will be forgiven. But if he's not going to be playing well, 
he can't have the the issues with, with the lack of accountability and things like that also on the side. You can have one, not the other, and you certainly cannot have both. Yeah, bottom line, it all comes down to playing well, but it's certainly going to be an interesting next 48 to 72 hours in Florham Park. Connor Hughes, thanks for joining us on Honda Sports Night.